North London derby, Tottenham against Arsenal. Nick, I'm going to come to you first because these two teams have been on the rise in recent months, been a few blips here and there, but very similar in terms of battling to get into the top four. So it's been a period of progress for both Tottenham and Arsenal. So what are you looking at and who are you favouring heading into this big game in North London? Yeah, I don't know who to favor. So that's what I'll tell you. And that's what's exciting for me. There was a period of time where I don't know if it, Andy will be able to obviously tell us much better, but a stretch of at least a couple of seasons where if these teams matched up, you had a feeling it was going to be Tottenham coming out on the winning end. And now the sort of rivalry honors are restored, if you will, in terms of going back and forth and feeling like the sort of derby where anything that could happen, um, you know, go back to the game where Lamella scored his wonderful goal and kind of lifted us. But I think in the last two games, it's just been Sun. <laughs> it's just been Sun getting the job done. This seems like a big chance for Harry Kane's resurgence to take the next step um, for Antonio Conte to flex against Mikel Arteta. It feels like Tottenham have a lot. I don't want to say they have nothing to lose from this, but with the matches in hand, the top four status up in the air, to me, Tottenham have an awful lot to win. And maybe they can play a little bit more carefree um, knowing that they're going to have the benefit of uh, of a lot of different things, including perhaps um, the pressure that comes with the venue. Absolutely. And the big problem here is obviously Honmin Son is out injured. So right. that really what I meant. Does, <laughs> that does, again, obviously pile the pressure on Harry Kane because he's done it so many times, hasn't he, in North London derbies. He, we all remember that photo of him in an Arsenal shirt when he was younger that always pops up around uh, before derby days and the days ahead of that game. But he always seems to raise his level, no matter how well he's playing or if he's in a bit of a slump, he always steps up on Derby Day. It's so tight, Andy. I mean, I know Tottenham's a club close to your heart, but going into this, I really cannot pick a favourite. I feel like this could be a two-all draw or, or something like that on the cards because both teams have defensive issues and both teams are just struggling for cohesion at certain yeah, points yeah. of the season and during certain points of a game even. They can have a great 45 minutes, but then they follow it up and be very inconsistent. So I guess that goes to show uh, just where they're at. Conte still doing uh, the early work at Tottenham and Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. I feel like they're just nearly getting there, but aren't quite there, right? Yeah, struggling for cohesion, I think, is a great phrase to describe both of these teams and certainly Spurs even more so at the moment, given that they've had an in-season managerial change. They had a summer managerial change. They've had two managers in the span of about four months time. So there's a lot of moving parts going on there. I've not loved what I've seen from Spurs recently. I know they've been better defensively and they're building a foundation. But if you look at the squad and the way that Conte wants them to play right now in this very moment, it's not a great fit. And that was my issue with Conte being mentioned in the summer. Now, obviously, you give him a transfer window in January, you give him a summer, maybe another full season to build the squad the way that he wants it. And then we could be talking about something completely different. But there's no, I don't know the word, there, there's just nothing that inspires fear in this Spurs team, aside from we know that Harry Kane can score at any moment from any place on the field. That's about it. Other than that, Spurs are not a dangerous team right now. They don't create a ton of scoring chances. They have good possession, and, and I think that they're able to control games much more so, obviously, than they, than they were under Nuno, better than they were under Jose Mourinho. Uh, but it, they don't instill fear in anyone. And I think that's the difference between these two teams going into this game. If you look at the form and you look at the individuals who are in really fine form on both sides, you can go down the list, four, five, six players on Arsenal side. I don't really know who you would pinpoint for Spurs and say, he's the one that's standing out. Davinson Sanchez, is, is that the one? And, and so we're talking about a center back who's been in and out of the team for four or five years, who's in a good moment right now, uh, but against Arsenal, a team that's going to look to really spread the field, that's going to look to put him in space, where one-on-one, -on -one, where he can make the, the uh, mistakes defensively, as he has done throughout his time at Spurs. Uh, it just, it seems like it's setting up for Arsenal in this one to me. And I don't say that, you know, to hedge or, or to make it easier to take it if Spurs are, are beaten this weekend. I genuinely believe that and because the, the, the feeling around Arsenal right now is the same feeling, and I recognize it, and, and it, it's, it makes you a bit jealous. It makes you a bit frustrated as well. It's the exact same feeling 
that Spurs fans had four or five years ago when the Maurizio Pochettino thing was really starting to take off, when it was really picking up momentum, and you could see that everyone had bought in and the on-field results, the spirit, everything was there. There's a little bit of that that I'm seeing at Arsenal, and I, I think that that momentum, I think, maybe pushes them over the line in the, not only this game, uh, but as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, probably the favorites for that top four spot. I, I enjoy the... Tottenham fan and it was their reverse psychology trick is tipping Arsenal to win this week. It's not. It's it's doing. really not. I see so, what you do. I'm I'm like bursting at the seams to say this and give you the pep top and rub your shoulders, Andy, because I actually think this is a really good opportunity. Uh, first of all, we know that uh, being young and dumb can be good, but this is a young team going into a derby in a place that is going to be loving Antonio Conte. Um, and I look at the last few weeks, I know Tottenham hasn't delivered the eye-popping results aside from the Palace game. But the one thing I looked up is I, I, I remembered watching that draw against Liverpool. And it was all, to me, it was all Tottenham. Um, Liverpool capitalized on their chances. Tottenham's allowed less than a single expected goal combined in their last three games. Now, I know that's Palace, Saints, and Watford. But those are teams that can attack you. I mean, not... Watford in this current iteration. It's Dennis and everyone else is hurt. But I just think that that Conte does have them moving in the right direction. They've all been on this stage before for the most part. And again, Kane, North London, Derby starting to score some goals again. Uh, I, I feel like Tottenham should win this game. Wow, that's a big statement. I'm really looking forward to this one because... As you mentioned right at the start, Nick, Tottenham for the last, what, seven, eight years now, they've had this rivalry. They've been on the rise. Andy mentioned that they're under Pochettino and they've continued that. The new stadium, almost identical to the Emirates in many ways and the rivalry. Now that Arsenal are back, this rivalry in North London is really, really good in my opinion. It has, it's always been good, don't get me wrong, but when one team is in the ascendancy, it's just not as much fun. We're going into this game this weekend and we really don't know who's going to win or who really is the favourite. I think that adds just to the occasion, the atmosphere, the fans go in there. And the fact that both of these teams are now in a position where they're battling together for a top four position. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a really, really good battle on and off the pitch in North London this weekend. And over at Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com, we have you covered with all the latest as Tottenham host Arsenal in a massive game, not only for their fans for this weekend, but also in the story of the rest of their season. How's the second half of the season going to pan out? You cannot underestimate what a big derby win will do for confidence and momentum for both of these teams moving forward. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.